one of the things that when when I was at a plan and I was thinking about starting this process at the beginning of my career, uh, a really great piece of advice that was given to me is, you know, who else touches your members? Um, and so a lot of health plans that I've since talked to, they said, you know, we're the payer and we sit at the center of the wheel. And I said, well, let's look at, you know, part of your membership. You're actually in many ways, three to four degrees of separation away from that affinity with that member. Maybe their first you know, touch point into your plan is through a broker. We look at ethnic and minority communities. They really rely on their broker to be that kind of entry point into healthcare for them. So they might have affinity there. And if that ladders up, for example, in, in my experience, you know, about 70% of my membership was held between about four different FMOs. Well, I got to make sure that I'm, I'm paying the piper and keeping them happy. Otherwise, they might flip my books the next year. Uh, and that's going to hurt me on a revenue perspective. The other one is, you know, thinking about where do I have value based care arrangements? Um, you know, do I have network adequacy sitting with one IPA? Well, we see in the news a lot of different um, provider groups are just leaving managed care completely. Well, what's that going to mean for my membership? Um, and then looking at, you know, when does the member get really a touch point with me? Are they only calling me when they have a question about their EOB or are they calling me because, you know, they're on, uh, you know, a care management plan and they're talking to one of my case managers, uh, you know, consistently. So really understanding like the Venn diagram or keep making different Venn diagrams of like, where's the intersection of where everything overlaps? And then you can start thinking about what individuals to start bringing to the table while you start that bid planning process.